What's up, everybody? How's it going? Well, welcome to episode 29 of Climbing the Ladder. I'm your host, Chan Man V. And joining me today, eventually, will be Mark Faraz of uh, Aquanic, uh, who, you know, who's always the co-host on the show. But uh, right now, I'm not sure where he is. He's going to be joining us, though. So he'll probably pop right in in a, in a few minutes or so. But we want to welcome today Mr. Zach <coughs> Zada from Mission of Reverses. What's up, Zach? Hey, man. How are you doing? Good, good. Zach is the director of programming at Mission Reverses. Correct? That's right, right? Correct. That's that show. would be. Yep, that would be correct. I work on the Versus channel. Um, Versus deals with all esports. You know, mm -hmm. gameplay, interviews, tips, etc. Uh, I apologize. I'm not in the best environment. I'm literally right <laughs> in the middle of an office, so uh, there might be a little bit noisy, and people do walk walk by occasionally. So uh, apologies in advance for that. No problem. No problem. Now that's the beauty of having you know working for kind of like a smaller startup type environment, right? You just got this, like everybody around you and uh, a lot of energy involved. That's, that's, oh, totally. It's always totally. great, man. Yeah. I mean, who knows? We may hear some yelling. Quiz, <laughs> Quiz's office is over there, so he's a very loud guy, so you, you, you never know, really. Yeah, actually, Quiz's, Quiz's, I saw Quiz is going to be on the executives tomorrow, so. It's, yeah, yeah, it's Quiz, uh, he'll be on the uh, executives with, uh, I guess, Jason Lake and yeah. uh, Chobo Peon, and is that? I mean, yeah, Odie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Odie, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It was a great show too. So it's going to be a lot of machinima this week. Uh, yeah, maybe um, too much. Who knows? <laughs> it can never get too much, right? Yeah. But yeah, so the point of this show is like you know I've been trying to plan a, a good time to have Zach come on. You know we've been trying to plan this for like months now, and um, I really just wanted you to come on and really have you know more of like an educational type of episode for folks that you know for co other content producers you know maybe smaller ones or or yep. big ones that just aren't familiar with machinima and machinima versus and you know, haven't done their research yet, and so it just just kind of give them at least a starter um, as to you know maybe how to get on Mission Versus. Yep. Uh, so for so you want me to just start with uh, how to get onto Versus, I guess. Um. Well, why or, don't we start? Why don't we start off um with what I guess the benefits of being on a YouTube network network is like. If there's a content producer out there that that's just like casting games, right? There's a lot. I think there's a, a a lot of folks that are doing that and making you know making their own videos. Um, yeah. What's the benefits of joining a YouTube channel like Machinima or Machinima Versus? As opposed to just sticking with like a YouTuber in the ad AdSense, is that what you're Yeah, and, you know, and just sticking with your own channel and yeah, and just, just basically sticking with AdSense. So I guess, I guess at least for Machinima, uh, there's certainly a variety of reasons. Uh, we have an on-hand direct support staff with a response time of about 10 hours or less. Uh, there's, we do a ton of promotional uh, opportunities uh, with our directors, social media, etc. Um, we have uh, additional revenue opportunities, you know, through our digital games program. Uh, like, for instance, we just did something with Need for Speed, and we gave uh, some people on our network early access to the game, and they were allowed to create content for it. Oh, nice. And uh, other than that, I mean, it's just the ability to, like, monetize off gaming content. Um, so those are pretty much, like, the big reasons, per se. I see. Okay. Yeah. And um, Machine Reverse is, is pretty new, correct? It's, I think it started in June. Is that right? Yeah, we launched it in uh, June, like, right around June hack. I see. And... Yep. <clears throat> You know, I know Machinima for a long time has had a lot of gaming. You know, they kind of they've had a lot of gaming content on Mach on Machinima. So, yep. what was the reason for creating Machinima Versus? I think it was just it was just about time, really. I mean, it was just about time that uh, Machinima kind of got into the competitive gaming esports market. And uh, Versus was, they, I, I used to be at MLG, and then I came over here, and they're like, okay. "We want a competitive gaming channel." And I was like, "Well, let's do it." Um, and I came on here about February. There was a lot of pre-planning, and then it finally launched in June. But um, what we've done this year is kind of just paved the way for next year. We've got a lot of big plans. Can't really speak to them yet. Right. Um, but Versus will uh, be home to a lot of uh, exciting things next year. Okay, great. Yeah. And so, so Versus is only competitive gaming. And so, what are yeah. the? I mean, what are the type of content that you're focused on? Because um, you know, right now when I go to Machine Versus, I definitely see an array of things, right? Yeah. Um, you know, this show obviously being one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, I see a lot of like casting games. I see, I see a lot of interviews, right? Yep. And um, yeah, yeah. Talk to me about, I guess, what I, I mean. Are those the type of con? That's the type of content you're targeting, and are the most preferred type of content, or? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it all it all refers or it all revolves around esports. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's you know, it's tips, tutorials, interviews with professional players. It's all centered upon, uh, you know, obviously, the best players from around the world. Um, because then, I mean, like we have we have our channel respawn or realm. It's like what's what's the difference between those yeah. channels yeah, and exactly. versus? You know, mm -hmm. it's just like like that gameplay where players talk about eating a sandwich for lunch, <laughs> and then like there's there's versus where it's like okay, I chose to do this build because et cetera et cetera. Like 
that's uh, that's I think the the goal of the channel is obviously competitive gaming and getting better. So are, are folks that cast, let's just say folks that take replays of professional games, yep. and they cast them themselves, is that content that would fall under uh, Mission Reverses as an yeah, umbrella? Yeah, it depends, because I don't want to oversaturate it with just a bunch of like casting gameplays. Right. Because um, there's certainly a ton out there. Um, it also has to be somewhat, like, obviously the content has to be good too. I mean, a, a lot of people cast, but yeah. is the caster good? Do they have a following? Is this, you know, is it interesting, et cetera? Um, but yeah, I mean, if it's centered upon pro gameplay, it's it's certainly up for up to be a candidate for the channel. Right. Okay. Okay. And um, like, what are I guess what are the 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 steps of which you know, like somebody goes to you know, I guess get in contact with you guys and really maybe even start the process. I mean, is there a vetting? I mean, do you guys vet like like um, producers? To be, and... yeah, to be honest, there's not really. Um, okay. I, I do a lot of it. I look. I look around and I see what's out there, and I kind of reach out myself. Um, I'm pretty. I'm usually pretty easy to get a hold of, though. You just get me on Twitter yeah, or something. Yeah, definitely, will, you're easy to I will, get a hold. I will, of. I will surely answer any questions on Twitter and like that. Or if you need my email, I'll give it to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, there really isn't like a formal application process at the moment. Um, who knows if there will be in the future, though? Yeah, and Zach, for you guys, he's definitely the man to go to too. I mean, we, you know. We're talking to the guy that <laughs> basically <laughs> approves or does, you know doesn't approve it. So um, definitely good stuff. So you're you're at MLG this weekend, right? I was, I was. Uh, it was a great tournament. Um, I always love going to MLG. It's not just yeah. because I used, to, you know, I used to work there and whatnot, but um, it's just always cool going there and seeing just a bunch of different games being played. And obviously, it's the world's best players there. Um, Dallas, in, in specific, was cool to see Halo Four back or Halo back in general. Yeah. Um, League of Legends was awesome. I was, you know, I was pulling for uh, Najee and Sword, but Blaze took it home. Um, and then uh, obviously StarCraft, Flash's run was crazy. Uh, I can't, you know, <laughs> yeah. life going from GSL to now this. I can't believe the kid's 15 as well. That's just that's just nuts to me that he's so young and so dominant. Um, but all in all, like a, a really solid weekend for MLG. I think even I mean, you got to really give it up to them as well for they had a bunch of the hur Hurricane mm -hmm. uh, Sandy affecting the actual tournament and a lot, some of the staff actually had to drive about 20 hours to, to Texas and whole nightmare for them but they pulled it to, they pulled it together pretty well. Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of bad luck kind of starting yeah. starting the tournament, you know, in regards to yeah, definitely the hurricane and, and everything, but yeah, I, I think it was successful. I mean, as a viewer, you know, I, I didn't really catch much of the other games honestly except for StarCraft because StarCraft, you know, it was just you know, there are only two streams, right? And they, and they just seem to be such compelling streams, especially with the Kespa guys and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how were the other games? Because I know you were trying to cover them all, right? I mean, given yeah, the so yeah, I was trying to cover StarCraft, League, and uh, Halo uh, mm -hmm. to the best of my ability. And um, we were talking earlier about this, but Halo, Halo was really interesting because they held a, held a tournament before a game was actually released. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, if if any of you follow that kind of like, that scene, uh, Halo 4 actually was leaked about three weeks ago, and you could pirate it and play it on a modded Xbox. Uh, some players had done this and they had kind of a head start. So, so uh, sorry. It's uh, obviously not fair. <laughs> no, obviously not fair. And, uh, you know, there's some controversy there. And all that. Guys. It's okay. Oh, he's on the call right yeah. now. He's doing a nice, fun live stream. <laughs> and you guys yeah, we got oh, the whole machinima hope. versus uh, yeah, like, all like here. office here yeah. <laughs> on the show today. Right. Anyways, back to that. So a lot of people are saying, you know, like, oh yeah, that team, but that team won, but there's an asterisk next to their name. Um, so that's that's what's going on in the Halo community at the moment. Uh, League of Legends. I think TSM surprised a lot of people by just they kind of fell fell short. Um, what else on League of Legends side of things? Like what? They just fell short. I mean, what do you? Like, I, I mean, what do you mean? I feel, like, I mean, I feel like they always, you know, like they always um, say they're gonna do they do a lot better, and then like they they just didn't they didn't show up really this tournament, um, in my opinion at least. I see. I see. Yeah. And um, CLG the CLG series where uh, North America played EU is absolutely mm -hmm. that was crazy. Um, I think the final game was over an hour. Uh, yeah, it was like an hour and five minutes long. Mm -hmm. One of the teams had over 100 thousand gold, which was oh my nuts. god, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it was a real, real crazy game. Uh, I think that was my favorite game I watched of the tournament. Um, and yeah, I think those like the main, the main storylines. Obviously, Blaze came out, came out on top, even though I thought Sword was going to take it home, but got to yeah. hand it to Blaze. 
Yeah, Blaze is. I mean, Blaze has been doing so well like the last, I don't yeah. know, half year now. You know, it's either Blaze or Frost. Yeah. It seems like yeah. so. <laughs> Zub, yeah. Exactly, Zub is doing really, really well. Uh, so, you know, as for the live audience, um, yep. which game had the biggest, the the biggest crowd? Uh, I, I would say League. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it, that's not to take away anything from StarCraft. I think the StarCraft Two <clears throat> fans definitely showed their support and came out, and uh, that that stage was pretty packed as well. But I think League took the edge there. So it was all in the same room. Yes, correct. So I mean, oh, StarCraft wow. is, StarCraft's in the middle, and you had uh, hey, uh, League of Legends to the right of it, and then Halo was all the way in the back, and then you had Fighters uh, to the left. Wow. Uh, what else they have there? And they had, uh, Shoot Mania was there, uh, repping their game, or Ubisoft, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, they had, is uh, that it? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm missing like a small little thing, but uh, yeah, that was, I think that was I, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's yep. good. Yeah, I couldn't. I just, I, I couldn't really tell. I mean, I would, I'd switch to the league stream like every once in a while, but um, I was like kind of out and about too, so I was just like kind of watching on my phone. So. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, uh, I'm, I'm being told by Jimmy Wisenhunt that uh, Planet Side Two had a booth. That's oh, a booth Planet. Group. Oh, booth. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got okay. you, Jimmy. Thank you. What's up, Mark? Hey, how's it hey, going? Sorry. All right, let me switch these. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little late. No problem. Oh, good. Just. We're just cruising through stuff, actually. <laughs> Zach, <laughs> man, Run through. Through. Exactly. But we were just talking about NLG. Yeah. So you, you came in at the right time, Mari. Mark, how's yeah, NLG for you? It was a pretty good event, man. I mean, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't finish out where we would have liked to, but I mean, I think that overall, um, overall, it was still a strong showing. And, you know, I think the, the, the staff and the crew were out happy there. We did a lot of content while on site. I think that was a really big news item for the weekend. If you watch Reddit at all, but um, so that was a success. We started that in Raleigh kind of real strong, and I feel like we showed a lot of improvement there, so I mean, from that standpoint, I think it was really good, and um, you know, we're looking, we're looking forward now to Lone Star Clash 2, and IPL 5, and DreamHack Winter, and on <laughs> next year. All back to back to back, man. Yeah. You guys did, um, I think it was, what, 39 interviews? Yep. 39 was? interviews, yeah. yes. We just didn't get one with you. Yeah, damn it. I was, I was avoiding you guys the entire time. That's, that's the truth of it. That's what, that's what it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why I kept seeing you everywhere. I think you are following yeah. me. Yeah, well, you caught me. Sorry. Yeah, you know. how, how far was the uh, interview? I'm a, I'm a good looking guy, so. What, hey, how, sorry, what was that, Chris? I was going to say, how far, <laughs> no, I was gonna say, Mark, how far was the interview suite from the, the so, floor? So if you're familiar at all with the Dallas Convention Center complex, there, the Omni Hotel is actually adjacent to the complex, and it's actually kind of built into it. Um, there's like a sky bridge yeah. that you can mm -hmm. take uh, across to the, um, the Omni directly mm -hmm. from the venue. Mm -hmm. It's not like a short walk, but once you hit that sky bridge second story um, area there, you can just kind of punch right into the hotel uh, elevators. Mm -hmm. And we were in the presidential suite on the 17th floor, so... Nice, it wasn't nice. too bad. It wasn't too bad. I mean, I'd say that the that the facility, like the the renting, the, the leasing of that room, is definitely like the biggest cost line item of, of you know doing that kind of production. Mm -hmm. I mean, once you already have the hundred k of gear that it takes to do it in the first place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Is there so. is there any op like would there be any opportunity to have a setup that's like out in the lobby? Like I mean, or who do well, you have to talk to about that? Actually, you know, we've talked about that a lot. Actually, we've we've tried to work with MLG to like lease space in the venue. We've tried to work with you know, like those there's those press lobby thingies there, but they're kind of a joke. Um, nobody really like everybody books them up real fast, but then they they don't actually go anywhere. <laughs> like like you can't get like you go in there, there's nobody there, but you can't. Yeah, use I feel it. like I feel like they don't get used. Like like I, I remember I used to try to book them and then. I just wouldn't get an interview, or somebody would be playing, or they just didn't want to do an interview because they lost. Um, I mean, what are they? Are they just like these these meeting room kind of things, or kind of like yeah, conference yeah. rooms? Yeah, gotcha. Um, actually, if you saw my ESFI interview, it was done in one of those rooms. Oh, okay, okay. Well, it's kind of hard to tell. Did you did you reach out to MLG about trying to get one of those rooms for say like Quantic? Is that um, you? Yeah, we did that, and they said no. And in fact, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I should say this or not, but... 
I mean, feel, uh, feel, free, feel free to just run out of that question if you don't want to answer it. No, no, well, I'm, I'll answer, never I'm going to answer it directly. I'm going to say that, you know, MLG has an agreement with the convention center of exclusivity to ensure that nobody else can actually lease space in that center. Oh, hmm. I see, I see. Oh, that makes perfect sense, though. I, mean, I totally get that. They because they don't want anybody else, like some other vendor, they don't want Razor coming in and setting up like a a big Razor thing right next to their, you know, Steel Turtle Series Beach. or a Turtle yeah, Beach that. event or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it makes, uh, sense. makes sense. Yeah. Well, I think it makes sense, but it's dumb because <laughs> I think that you know, like, if MLG wants to rent the entire convention center or something like that, or all those rooms or something like that, and then lease them out, I just feel like it's I don't know, it's just a way to. It's a way to enhance their business model, and I've and I've always wondered why teams don't have merchandise, yeah. you know, opportunities on the floor. They have this MLG store. We can't even put our our merchandise in the MLG store. Yeah, there should absolutely be. I mean, John, MLG, I'm you take the margin on that. Mm -hmm. There could be a huge margin on that. Yep. I mean, there should at the very least were there team booths this time or no? Team no. booths. No. Yeah, there totally needs to be team booths. They're I missing mean, the boat on that big time. Yeah, they could be making. I mean, even if they charge you guys a little bit, I mean, they could be making some money right there. Right? I mean. If not a rev share from the well, they should start by they should start doing it by not charging and doing it with the premier teams, and then basically allow yeah, the, yeah. the teams to find their revenue stream from being there, right? Because there's going to be some revenue flow from being there. Yep. If that's like merchandise, if that's whatever, I mean, you know, and I think that a lot of that's going to come through our partners, like Zach over here. You know, I mean, like Zach may have some kind of a promotion that he wants to do. Through Quantic and our presence at the event, that's kind of like activation for Machinima, and how we like learn to monetize that and figure out how to monetize that, and and deliver for Machinima, because that's really what the teams do. We deliver for the partners, and the fans. So once we can figure out how to deliver on that, then MLG can start charging, or they can start you know doing a rev share, or they can start doing whatever. But I mean, at the minimum, having some kind of like, I don't even understand why MLG doesn't just go get some big merchandising company and say, okay, look, you know, we, we'll do, like, all these shirts or whatever. If you don't have an exclusive agreement with somebody else, then, you know, you can do shirts and hats and hoodies and whatever at our event, and we'll just cut you as a check for a margin on that, you know, 20% or whatever. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it's just not, it's not happening right now. And I think it's not happening because they're just too busy doing other stuff. I don't think it's because they don't want to do it. Sure, sure. I don't think it's because they don't want to do it at all. I think it's because everybody's right now in this like media frenzy. They're all trying to figure out how they're going to own and dominate the entire space through media. Like that's that's it. Like, like we're doing this. Like we did these interviews. Like these interviews cost us a lot of money to do this weekend. They cost us a lot of money to do in Raleigh. Are we getting any money for that? No. But we're trying to show partners what we can do. We want to show Machinima that instead of having their dinky guy there with the camera crew and the big fluffy microphone, they dude, dude. <laughs> shots fired, man. Exactly. Shots fired. Shots fired. Look at that. Man. Oh. <laughs> guest etiquette, no, Mark. Guest know. etiquette. I know, I know. And this is my sponsor. I know. No, uh, uh, Mark and I are. I appreciate your openness all the time, Mark. You know, we talk a lot. And you're always very open with me, and I, I think I'm pretty open with you as well. So it's, it's appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Um, back to back to. I I don't want. I don't mean to divert this whole talk, but um. Nope. nope. Go ahead. To play devil's advocate, like, what does MLG get out of say if? They let you guys do that at at an event. So just like just them being nice, or is it? Um, well, revenue, I mean, right? Take it out of out of what? I mean, doing like a rev share on on merchandise, or you mean like having team booths? Team booths. Well, I mean the the bottom line is 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 this, and that is that fundamentally MLG is in a position now where exclusivity is no longer a requirement, and I'm sure that it's enhancing the the dollar value of some of their agreements. But, I mean, they don't want to be in a situation where they're exclusive with Astro Gaming anymore. They want to have Turtle Beach and Steel Series both sponsoring their events. Yeah. That means that they've transitioned from a sponsorship model to an advertising model. So if they're doing an advertising model, it's ad buy on point, right? Like per unit, right? So per unit of, of, of impressions, right? That means that every single floor unit that they have in that venue is monetizable. Yeah. And the fact that they are... <sighs> I don't know how much they're getting some kind of revenue enhancement out of saying, well, you know, um, Twitch doesn't have, you know, doesn't have any competition in this venue or SteelSeries, we're going to make sure that Razor doesn't have any competition in this venue. Um, 
I mean, it's got, like, it was to the point, like, look, last year, we had to fight to put Turtle Beach in our jerseys. Like, now, Turtle Beach is sponsoring the event, but, I mean, now, like, this year, like, one time this year, the Razor guy got ushered out, right? But, like, I don't even think that's happening anymore. I think it's to the point now where MLG is really like, hey, look, you know, they, we got to do what's good for our business. And our, our business says the more people that are willing to give us money to be here, the better. So let's, you know, let's monetize this as best we can. I think the team booze is just a secondary or tertiary way of monetizing. It's a secondary or tertiary monetization strategy for them. And I think it also encourages the right kinds of behaviors with the teams. And they have like six to ten premier teams in the world right now that they're, that they're working with. And those teams are almost all kind of doing the right things already to a certain degree. And... We just need more of that. We just need more people. Monetization of the space is what's necessary right now. Like really, really, really badly necessary. And I mean active monetization, not through advertising, not through passive click the button and there's X right. number of people so you get paid. I mean like active monetization where it's turning activations for BenQ. Like Nanny was signing autographs at the full cell booth. Like why can't we have State or Illusion or, or Sase or STC or Golden or whatever signing autographs somewhere too? Why does it have to be that MLG is the only one who can set us up with a $200 stipend to sign autographs on their floor? Why can't we figure out how to, <laughs> like that? These are all right. questions that are good to have answered, right? I mean, I'm Lee Chen here, but I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the booths are, you know, for one, for the first off, they can just, you know, they can just charge you for the booths, right? I mean, just like any other conference convention, right? They, they'll charge you, what, are five, ten grand for a booth or something, if they want, right? But not to mention, I feel like it just adds a better experience for all the people that, all the attendants, or all the attendees. When all your, you know, all your favorite teams actually have like an area where the players will probably congregate around. You can buy like, you know, your favorite paraphernalia from your, you know, your, your favorite team. And I don't know, it just, it just creates a better experience. And that, of course, that's going to that's gonna benefit MLG, right? I mean, if I have a fun time with my son or whatever at, at MLG, I'm going to come back. For sure. Right? Absolutely. I completely agree. And I mean, I even think almost to the point where there's like some degree of, of an argument for the player area, subdivision of the player area into some kind of like, you know, I don't know, man. Like, like there's these four workstations that Quantic players, if, if possible, are always going to be playing on, you know, so that. Oh, Quantic you need designated kind of, practice stations. I mean, I'm just. Type of thing. Like, we just need to get more creative, man. I mean, and I mean more creative, like not by like switching from Twitch to own and then having everything crash. I mean more creative, <laughs> like, like actually trying to figure out what to do on the floor. You know, I mean, like, the creativity <laughs> needs to be on the front end, not the back end. And you I'm not. Be, I mean, I'm being critical of MLG here, but I'm not because it's not just MLG. It's I think, yeah, no, I think that. it's, a, I think it's a bigger, bigger issue for sure. Yeah. Um, but even like to your point, like maybe, maybe there's a station where. Quantic's here from 12 to 2, then EG's there from 2 to 4, something. Or then there's maybe, for merchandise, maybe you can get, like, a Quantic logo printed on a shirt, and Quantic gets uh, 10, 15, 20% what it is of that shirt. Mm -hmm. um, there's certainly some creative options that can be done here. Um, but who, who knows? I mean, it's, it's not really up to mm -hmm. us. I guess it's a league's. It's kind of, yeah, that's the thing. It's kind of like depending on the leagues to like figure this out. And honestly, this is like, this is like the not considered to be low hanging fruit by them at all. I mean, they, they consider low hanging fruit. But that's clearly, as evident from this weekend, they consider low hanging fruit to be squeezing a few more pennies in CPM out of X number of views that they can count on, right? I mean, that's kind of where, that's what the strategy is. I mean, I mean, but that's funny because that's not low hanging fruit. <laughs> well, but, it, well, but, it, but it, no, but see, here's the thing though: it's something that they can do completely unilaterally on their on their side without any required interaction or dependency on anybody else, and see a result from. Okay. All right. right? Sure. Right. Sure. I mean, like if you look at, I mean, like Machinima is in a totally different situation. Like their business model has always been about content that's produced by other people. Like. They're constantly motivating everybody to produce great content, to, to, to adhere to new policies and rules and adapt to an ever-changing business environment. That's kind of like their business model. Well, I mean, MLG has the same kind of a problem. The only difference is, is that MLG isn't paying all of us. See, that's the thing. Like, like if we were all getting some kind of a revenue share on, on the CPM that's being generated by the stream, and we were all getting paid to be there, then, then they would have like a player team community, much like, like Machinima has a producer community. But but that's not happening. So instead, 
largely we're still paying to go there, right? And we're paying to be there, and we're paying a lot of money to be there. Like, I mean, our travel budget for this event was like 10 grand. Well, I mean, let's talk a little bit about like what teams actually pay MLG to be there. I mean, it's it's one thing to obviously have a, a large expense, the travel expense and mm -hmm. and lodging expense, that sort of thing. But what do teams actually? I mean, how many? Like, what fees do you actually pay to MLG to enter? Well, I mean, we pay for player passes, of course. Right. Um, you know, we, but I mean, more than anything, yeah, we pay to have our players there competing in their event. Um, and you have to realize that, like. As much as I think, and I don't know why this conversation's gotten completely strapped it's around. So, it's it, so off, yeah. Exactly. But. It's, so, it's so MLG centric. So, Sunday, yeah, I, I, I apologize. The, I'm sorry that we're using MLG as an example here, but I, that's all it is. It's just an example. Yep. Um, you know, MLG is the premier league in the world. So, they're arguably better at this than anyone else. They've been doing it longer, and they've learned their lessons the hard way, and they've learned how not to repeat them. That being said, Arguably, anybody could set up a projector screen and a oh, stream in a convention. Your audio went out, man. Am I here now? Oh. 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 I think I'm, I hear you. I don't okay, know I think it was my audio. Okay. Everybody, anybody could set up like a screen and a projector and a and a and a convention center space and put on an event. And yeah, they're going to have their missteps and they're going to have their lessons learned and everything else, right? But the fact of the matter is that unless you have the talent and the players that people are willing to spend the time watching, it doesn't really matter, right? So, I mean, to a certain degree, the talent is the greatest, like, quantifiable, like, value point that's brought to the equation. Right. Because if you don't have, like, you know, the drama between Idra and Flash and, and Bomber and Scarlet and, and Illusion and Sase and all these people, it doesn't really matter. And managing that talent... Is a very thin margin activity, and it's very difficult, and and it's very taxing and very unforgiving. So, we do that. We train these players. We 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 house these players. We feed these players. We travel these players. We equip these players. We get these players to these events. To a certain degree, to the benefit of not only our partners and the fans, but also the events and the publishers themselves. Because in this game, in this title, at this moment, right now, these fans want to watch these people play. Not somebody else. Right. These specific people. So, I mean, when I say I'm spending 10K, or we're spending 10K on travel budget to get to MLG Dallas, I'm not saying that that's MLG's problem, or that MLG should pay us 10K, or that it's like anything like that whatsoever, you know, or it's Blizzard's fault, or whatever. All I'm saying is, is that the, 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 that the burden of that expense of getting those players to the event, it does, it's not distributed adequately, or it's not distributed equitably among all the beneficiaries. Um, and that goes all the way down to the fan level. But I mean, specifically, it's, it's, it's definitely leaning on the teams more than anybody else, right? And you could say, well, shit, I mean, that's by your own choice. It's your own choosing. You, know, you could have it any other way. Well, you're right. We could just not have a team at all. That's pretty much the alternative, is yeah. we just don't show up to the events, or we just don't have a League of Legends team, or we just don't whatever, right? Because to a certain degree, you know, how much are you willing to fund on your own and secure on your own? I mean, our partners may be funding XYZ, right? But the securing of this and the securing of all the risk associated with it and the liability is in, it's held entirely by the team. Maybe yeah. I'm going a little bit I mean, deeper. We're, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're going really, really deep. I mean, we could, <laughs> we could spend a whole episode on this, which... Yeah, yeah no, but, seriously. Sure. But um, let's get back to, like, I guess, more of the kind of machinima versus and content side of, side of things, right, with, with Zach. And, um, you know, before you got on, Mark, you know, we definitely talked about, you know, what machinima, you know, what the, the, I guess, the advantages of being on a YouTube channel is for content pr producers and, you know, what machinima versus is doing and that sort of thing. But um, I did want to... I did want to kind of, you know, get a sense, Zach, from you as to, you know, what Machinima versus kind of sees as kind of like the pie in the sky right now for, you know, like what do, what do you see as being the most ideal case for um, esports and for you guys from a content standpoint? For content? Um, yeah. Well, right now I think the biggest thing that I'm focusing on is just awareness. Uh, a lot of people just don't know that Machinima has an esports channel. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's due to a variety of, like, reasons. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it gets... It, Gets kind of deep there, but um, I, I think that the, the like you're saying like what our number one goal is right now. Mm -hmm. Get some more machinima budget, marketing budget spread on their channel. 
that's that's certainly one of them. But I think like just good quality content, um, just really really building out the content and making like making content that people really want to watch. Um, there's just the, yeah, I, I, I think there's just like not enough good esports content out there. Um, I mean, well, okay, let's talk about that. Like, I mean, are we talking about? All right, you know, I guess you can kind of put it in, in the buckets, right? You can put them in the buckets of like, let's talk about esports content right now. It, it's it's either, you know, people casting games, right? Yep. Like, and there's like a ton of people doing that. And obviously, Husky made it. Like Husky and HD and those guys yeah. were huge in the very beginning of all this. Um, and then you have a bucket that's just interviews with yep. pro players. Yep. And then you have a bucket that's, I guess, shows, right? Like this one. Um, are there any other buckets you can think of that's esports related? I mean, there's there's certainly your like tips videos. Oh yeah, where, so, yeah, yeah, educational you, you, ones, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, I don't think there are enough of those. Definitely. Um, okay. Even you know you, you look at like a lot of the league content out there. Um, who are the big league guys? You got like Potato Monster, Jump in the Pack, Civ HD. Mm -hmm. Um. Those are all really popular. I mean, they do a lot of like top five type videos. Um, Tib does a lot of you know uh, breakdowns, like a, like a a guide, champion guide. Um, but I don't. I mean, other than that, I mean, you look at the league content or the stuff posted on like Reddit League of Legends. It's like a twenty second clip of a penta kill, or it's right. a ten second fail or something. Um, there's really just not a lot of just pure esports content out there. Um, I think that's what we're trying. We're trying, or, or hopefully, we'll change that with Machinima versus. I see. I see. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because, like, right now, when it comes to CPM, right? I mean, I mean YouTube definitely rewards engagement, right? And, and and you know, people watching videos for a long period of time, right? I mean, your CPM's higher the longer people watch it now these days, right? Yep. Um, it's not so much about, I guess, as, as he view heavy as it used to be. Uh, because of that, I mean, I noticed one thing on your channel is that most videos are no more than 30 minutes. I mean, if anything, some of them are like 5, 10 minutes long. Um, is that the kind of sweet spot for videos, you think? or Certainly, certainly. Okay. Um, uh, definitely with our audience, too. Uh, our audience certainly has a, a, a shorter, <laughs> shorter attention span. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's, there's no secret about that. Um, but yeah, we, we try to cut, keep the videos around five to ten minutes long. I think that is like the sweet spot, so to say. Yeah, and um, uh, Mark, you know, Mark, you know, with a Quantic team, right? I mean, obviously, Quantic has a lot of lot of um, content that's being shown on Machine Versus right now. Um, what are you got? You what are you guys focusing on? Like, you know, from your standpoint as being a content producer. I mean, obviously, you did a bunch well, of interviews this week, right? But um, we have so many different content opportunities and stuff going on right now. We're kind of a unique organization because of our of our heritage and our history of working with the publishers and doing collaborations with musicians and other things of that nature that make it a little bit unique. We have some special projects right now that we're trying to get off the ground to do some collaborations that would allow some some independent musicians to do to do some projects of projects to better reach into the gamer demographic. I mean, we really focus on production quality. Unfortunately, the, the area that we've had a difficulty with is getting that, that content into places where it's really high traffic. Um, yeah. Um, you know, like, because this is like an unfettered real talk type show, I'll say that to, to date, our like easiest, our easiest um, avenue to that has actually been with IGN. Um, but oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, just because there's the concentration of traffic on their channels. But our hope has been that, you know, that Machinima is really going to start putting you know more energy into verses and seeing its growth like they have some of their other channels which I think that they've just been distracted with other channels honestly right now um, but I mean I think that um, we've only really worked with IGN on a very limited basis and this was before we were sponsored by Machinima so I think that um, but IGN is kind of a mess in and of itself just to work with it's a mess so like where Machinima's like whole back office and everything is all organized they, they're just kind of like I don't know they're just they're, it's not, I don't want to say difficult, but I mean, it's just it's difficult to get things coordinated properly. Um, yeah. Whereas Machinima has got a really really great team and staff of people that are just on the ball all the time. So it, it really helps people like Zach here just get it done all the time. So um, yeah, I, I can speak for that too. I mean, Zach's you're always accessible, so that makes yeah. a huge even if huge I'm like difference. not on Skype, you can be on yeah. Twitter, like literally anywhere. Um, I'm usually I can usually get back to you within like ten minutes if it's like urgent anything. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's necessary though, like not just because like you know I work for like Machinima, but just in esports in general, there's always something going on. There's always you have to be very reactionary to everything going on in the scene. 
Yeah, and I think that, I mean, Scott, I mean, Scott, Zach here can kind of testify a little bit. I mean, we're the only machinima sponsored team in the world right now, and I think that he can kind of testify as to probably why that is and why we were, they, they actually approached us about this as well. So, I mean, why, why that actually happened, um, I think, is just because of the professionalism and the, the multi-dexterity and flexibility and depth of, of creative power and capability that we have as an organization, esports aside, you know, just yeah. from a media standpoint. And I think that our challenge has been trying to connect that with esports. I think that's what everybody's challenge is right now. Yes, yeah, so, so what struck out to me was you guys understand YouTube a lot and you guys create mm -hmm. quality content. What baffles me is that like other esports organizations and teams have these amazing players and they have access to these players and they don't do enough with them. Um, I, I hope it changes, but I mean, right now, I mean, there's just not enough good quality content coming out from the teams, at least. Um, yeah. Besides Quantic, I mean, you look at like EG, EG does some some really good stuff with like you know their Kingston commercials are really funny. Um, but what else is out there? I know Fnatic has a channel now. And they're starting to do more content. Um, Navi does some good stuff with their Dota 2 team, I believe. Um, do you guys know any other teams who do like really good quality content, though? I mean, I think I that. I mean, are you are you talking yeah. about on a regular basis, or are you just regular, about regular, from time consistent, to time? Okay. regular, consistent basis? Yeah. Complexity. Complexity. Yep. Yeah, complexity. They, they yeah, we're talking. It, they don't do it that regularly, Mark. I mean, I mean, they're they're they're. I mean, they're they're like, for example, let me give you an example. Then, all right, mm -hmm. you're gonna bone up on me, son. I'll show you step <laughs> off, son. I mean, uh, dude, they do it, but you know they, do guy, it, you know, they do you it. They do it. Sam SC two. Sam SC two. He's a very small time caster oh, guy. Oh, okay, okay. I give you. Some Man, time. they've been doing this stuff with him now, like complexity branded yeah, and everything. This like cooking show and all this kind of stuff. It's really cool. I mean, they're like, it's not really getting a lot of attention, but I mean, they're trying. Yeah, I mean, they they just they just picked up Sam onto the academy like a month or two ago. So yeah, I give you that. I give you that. I mean, I gotta give props to Jason and Jason over there. I mean, they do a good job. I mean, you know, they're further down they're further down the uh, the journey way that, that, than we are. But I mean, I you know, I definitely respect and admire everything that they do. Yeah. Um, even though they gotta go get Ryan on their show since we got Zach, that's cool. It's all good. <laughs> but I mean, um, you know, but aside, that aside, I mean, like as far as like I've been seeing some questions in chat. You know, interviews and just new people like Timess and Pi, and and um, who's a brand new streamer on Twitch, who's a gold gold Terran player. He's only got six hundred followers, but he's been growing really, really rapidly. That's the guy you uh, introduced well. me to uh, in Dallas, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Nice and he's not even associated with Quantic, but yeah, we yeah, still yeah. are promoting him as a community streamer because we kind of believe that that's something that's really needed right now. I mean, as far as players go, I mean, we have the uh, like the reason we don't have an academy is because our whole roster is an academy. Um, if you look at all up-and-coming players like Hawk and State and Illusion and, and you know, um, Dodoro and, and Flo and our, our engagement with the, on, the, on the, uh, the, the female gaming side, you know, the women gamers um, with Matalisk, I mean, and especially, like, and I, I'm going to plug Check6 here, um, who is no longer in business, but I mean, like, they did this with, with, with Maximus Black. Well, we're kind of st starting to do this with Maximus Black as well. Same thing with um, with uh, with Destiny. You know, I think the fans underestimate the power of personalities in 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 the space. And I think that when you have somebody like a Maximus Black who's promoting somebody like a Tomes and Pie, it becomes a very powerful thing. And when we had started this this little community service campaign with Maximus, I mean, with community promotion campaign on, on Tomes and Pie stream with Maximus Black visit. And that later that night, over the course of the next 12 hours, we had visits from Day9, from In Control, from Root Cats. And that's just an example of how having somebody to promote that wasn't necessarily a Quantic player gave us this like, leeway to go out there and ask for people's involvement. And they just stepped right in and lent a hand with their like, massive followings. So, I mean, that just goes to show you that there is actually a lot more goodwill in the community. It's just that, you know, there's this whole concept that it's all about you know, the people who are really popular have all the views and stuff. You know, how come G GD Studios got 2,450 viewers right now and we only have 135, right? <laughs> is it because, you know, the people who are there are more popular than we are? Well, maybe, maybe not. But the fact of the matter is, is that the way the content wheel turns, like, it's like a flywheel. So you step on it with all your weight for, like, ever and it doesn't even move and then it starts to slowly move and then it turns faster and faster and faster and before you know it, you can, like, let go of it and it just keeps turning and then, yeah. You like stick your hand in there and it breaks your hand off and eventually that flywheel just has so much momentum built up behind it 
that eventually, if our content is better than GD Studio's content, eventually we will have their 2,450 viewers. It's a wow. fact. It just it yeah. may take a while, I mean, <laughs> but it will happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, not GD Studio. Does, 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 they, they, they do a lot of good stuff, too. What is Mark saying? For sure. Hi. Oh, Mark, how you doing, buddy? But, <laughs> But Zach, I did want to ask you—you know, like bring bring it up. <laughs> You're lucky like, I'm not in there, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, you can join us too if he wants, actually. <laughs> but, um, but the the I wanted I did want to ask you, Zach. Um, you know, somebody brings it up. You no, know, actually, I was gonna in the stream chat. I was gonna bring it up too. Is you know, one thing that seems to be common with you know a lot of these channels, right? Is they you know they don't seem to approach or accept content producers that aren't popular, you know, that don't already have this established views. They seem to always, you know, kind of pick guys that are already, like, you know, you know they're going to get views, you know, right? And um, talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, what, does Machinima Versus do that, or do you guys, you know, would you guys take a chance on a Timus and Pai, you know, that, that type of guy? So um, I'm actually, I'm working on, I, I can't talk about it too much, but I'm working with a uh, <laughs> relatively unknown director for some new League of Legends content. Okay. And, um, He's not really known, but uh, I, the quality and the the consistency of his content is really good, um, and you'll actually see that. I think the first episode either this week or next week. Um, but I, I think you have to look at YouTube content like this. It's like it's like a triangle. There's like there's gameplay, there's editing, and then there's like personality. I think if you have two, then you're then you're, you should be good. Um, so I look I look for those those three things, and then if they, if a director has two of them. I, I tend to reach out and talk to them more and see, hey, would you like to do something? Is this something that you'd like to do on a consistent basis, et cetera? So it's, it's not so much that we go right after the people with the most amount of views and following. Um, I, I, that, it tends to work the, the most, but I mean, I, I am looking for other people as well. It's also about competing interests, too. I mean, to a certain degree, a, a newer producer who's up and coming, maybe has like a thousand or less subscribers on, his, on their own channels and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, I don't know. It's it's different with it's different with versus than it is with Realm or with Respawn because Respawn has over a million subscribers. So when you bring the one thousand sub channel to the watering hole of a million subscribers, you're almost guaranteeing them thirty to sixty v, sixty k in views. And even at the CPM payout, it's like a much better financial arrangement for them to be contributing that 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 content. But I think that once Versus gets its subscriber you know, levels up, mm. it's going to be very much the same thing. Zach's going to be offering them a huge exposure opportunity and financial opportunity to devote a lot more of their content production efforts towards Versus content. Whereas like, if they already have like, a gajillion subscribers on their own channel, it's like, so hard to get them to take time away from... Why would they, why would they like, do that? Like, if they already yeah. have more subscribers than... Like, they already have 300,000 subscribers... Then why are they going to put content on verses that has like you know, ten or twenty thousand subscribers? So like, Zach's constantly having to manage this, and and like, with each particular person he talks to, he's got to talk to them differently, and it's it's like a very unique arrangement. And like, what is their motivations, and how can he motivate them to to deliver great content to verses as a channel? But the fact of the matter is, if you deliver great content to verses, it will pay off eventually. Like, yeah. and it's all about consistency, right, Zach? You got to be consistent. Yeah. Correct, correct. Because uh, in, in the beginning when Versus launched, I mean, there were a lot more people signed on board, and then, you know, they weren't too happy with the, the views, I guess, and then they, they slowly just dropped off. Um, but it really is all about the consistency, and there's no doubt in my mind that we, we, we've got some crazy things planned for next year, and the people who have stuck with us will certainly see a, a, a payout, if you will. So... Uh, how you know you don't? It definitely makes sense that if somebody has a great, great, you know, giant channel, a lot of subscribers, that they, you know, doesn't really make sense to use Machine Versus. Um, how often does double dipping occur? Um, I mean, is there any benefits to double dip? Like, I mean, me, me double dip, to, to do like, both or? yeah, doing both, yeah. I mean, maybe maybe just to try to broaden your audience a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if, say, say you're just a StarCraft two centric guy, and maybe you want some some other people to see it, then that won't normally see it, maybe a League of Legends person or something. Um, I guess you can just hope for the cross-pollination there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, I mean, the, the YouTube audience usually stays pretty segregated, so yeah. I don't know how much, how much cross-pollination you really see. So do you think when it comes to the content producers, they're, they're either just all in with you guys or all in with themselves? Is that kind of what it comes down to? <clears throat> I, I think so, unless you, give them enough incentive, unless you give them enough incentive to really 
really push it from from our end at least. I mean, I see like from my perspective, I see. I mean, like like and I don't know. Through proxy, to a certain degree, like the role that Zach plays with versus is through proxy almost a role that I've played with with respawn. So I mean, like when I've brought producers to respawn, mm -hmm. or like when I brought a new director to respawn, let's say, and they only have like a thousand subs, and I'm saying like, look, look, um, you know, Anthony, you know, Scott McDonald, look at look at this content, look at this guy, he's got great stuff going on. Um, he's got a strike in his channel right now. He needs to throw it away and make a new channel and start from scratch. I mean, this guy's going to produce a lot of content for, for, for Respawn for a while. But, I mean, like, once he gets himself back up to, like, 1,000 subs or let's say he gets to 10,000 subs or let's say, like, many. Like, I brought over 10 or 15 directors to Respawn that are all at 80 to 100,000 subs right now. Those guys are going to start producing more and more content. Their regular content is going to go on their channels. But when they do like a landmark work, it's still going to send be sent to respawn like every time, if for no other reason than I think just their business relationship. I think. <laughs> but I mean, if 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 respawn goes to those guys and says, "Hey, we want you to do a show, and we want it to be on respawn every week, right?" And we're willing to incentivize that, make that work for you, then a lot of times they can get like a sliver of that that commitment. And I think that that's Zach's strategy as well. And when he engaged us, he's like, "Hey, I want three shows a week, or I want three you know, videos a week, or I want, you know, this kind of content, some FPS content, and some, some RTS content, and some mobile content. <sighs> it's all about consistency, guys. It is all about consistency. I mean, if you want to post one video a day for, like, you know, a year, you're going to have one video a day a year for a year, you're going to have, I don't know, if I had to guess, somewhere between five and 10,000 subs at the end of that year. I mean, that's a lot of videos, though. One video, that's 365 videos, but... You're gonna post three videos God a day. God bless you. God bless you if you can do that. <laughs> if you're gonna post, if you're, you know what? And I know people like Shibby. Before Shibby was hired by Machinima, he was posting three videos a day, and he would post those three videos like down to the minute. I mean, like within sixty seconds of each day, like he would post that video exactly. He's yeah, still, people he appreciate still posts that. Videos, actually. and he's a he's a full time employee here. He's he's an absolute animal. He's an animal. One. Yeah. This is Shibby twenty one forty two. Yeah, is the it, person it, we're talking it, about. Yeah. It's certainly it's certainly a commitment, to say the least. Um, but I mean, for for him, I mean. He's at how many subs these days? 85,000 or 120. Is, 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 that like that. He, is that what he's at? Yeah, I don't even know. Um, but he's, he's still doing it. It's crazy. And he, he works 40 hours a week. Don't know how. That's because he loves it, man. Yeah, he loves exactly. this shit. It's, it's you love this shit too much. Too much. 21, 125K. The yeah, Rocket okay. Man, bro. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put his link in the chat here so you guys can check him out. He is a Machinima employee now, but I mean, he was he started Quantic Media. He was one of the founding members of Quantic Media. So I mean, um, now you know, like, like now, for example, could I get could I get Shibby to post on Quantic Media's channel right now, like only because of our relationship? Like, I would have to really incentivize him to do that. Um, and it's something. It's unfortunate that you know, like, it's unfortunate that 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 the people who, once you get big enough on your own. Like if you're just on your own, you have no reason to promote anybody but yourself, right? It's yeah, just, just like a, you can just separate, which it, it's certainly a bigger problem, than just like with a uh, with a network or a team or anything like that. I mean, how do you how do you incentivize them without like paying a boatload of money? Like, right. Yeah, it's because you because take because you'd have to earn that. To, like you're basically buying exposure. Like yeah, that's yeah the whole thing. exactly. I mean, that's what the you're buying, selling. Selling exposure. exposure. Yeah. Right. You're basically selling exposure. So it's, I mean, I totally don't understand why people don't like, you know, kind of double up more because I don't feel I don't feel like it's that there's that much cannibalization. Um, you know, I can't see folks that are. Let's just say let's just bring up Jeff, you know Maximus Black, right? Let's just say you know Maximus Black has a channel, right? That's pretty popular, and you know he also posts stuff on you know, through Quantic on Mission Versus, right? I, I just don't see how the mission reverses views, you know, would would um, you cannibalize his views, given that, you know, you guys have I, I feel like a totally different set of subscribers probably than he does. Yeah, I mean, we have these subscribers from e every scene, which is yeah. which is good and bad. Um, certainly, it's certainly cool to have one one uh, area where everybody can aggregate. But at times, you know, you, you post a Call of Duty video and then you see StarCraft players like, what the hell is this? Like, yeah. freaking out. <laughs> I know what you mean. Um, but yeah. Content segregation is a real issue. Um, yeah. 
uh, it's a real issue, and I think it's going to become even more of an issue as as YouTube Live starts to kick in and and Machinima Live, and we start to see like you know streaming available on what I would say are non niche platforms, you know, like ubiquitous global platforms. Um, which yes. I, I mean, arguably Twitch and own are, but I mean, they're not YouTube. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm just being honest. And they're I mean, still going to be segregated. I mean, even when that happens, then they'll start to segregate there too in, in, in some way, right? I mean, right. But I'm, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how that happens. Because, yeah. because YouTube is so much more personality driven than it is title driven. Like, every personality that's made on YouTube um, on like Title X ends up multi gaming. Like, people watch Jeff because it's Jeff. Like, if they hate League of Legends, they're still watching Jeff. Yeah. It's a fact. That's a fact. You can dispute it all you want. It doesn't yeah, matter. Same it's with Tulevisk. Yeah, I mean, yes. I, know you, I know what you mean. Yep. Yeah, so, like, the whole title thing, like, yeah, it's going to be tough. And when you look at, when you look at uh, Total Biscuit or you look at um, Maximus Black, you look at these people have, like, 100,000 subscribers, or in Total Biscuit's case, has a million subscribers. Like... There's no niche platform that's ever going to be able to deliver him the viewership that YouTube will be able to. So it's all about monetization at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because these people are going to live in doing this. You know, I think a topic that we could really cover, Chris, would be really good is how do you go from not earning a living doing this to earning a living doing this? Yeah, this sure. Is that you really love. Yeah, I mean, yeah, let's talk about just from, I guess, day one to, to you know, being from the standpoint, yeah, like, like you said, making possibly like six figures from this, right? I mean, maybe not six figures, but even, even just five or six figures from this, I think would be, uh, a lot of people would be extremely, extremely happy about. Um, so yeah, so Zach, talk to us a little bit about that content. I mean, does it, it, so, you know, Mark's been talking a lot about how they're focused on quality. And you know, those, those quantity videos are amazing. <laughs> I mean, from a quality standpoint, just, <coughs> just heads, you know, heads and shoulders above anything else that's in YouTube, uh, that's in esports right now that I've seen at least in StarCraft 2. Mm -hmm. So, um, how much does quality have to do with it versus just, you know, the entertainment factor from the actual personality or person, you know? It, that, I, that's I, think, I, I think a big factor is also is being an early adopter, being ahead of the curve, um, yeah. seeing, seeing that this game's coming out, I want to make content oh, for it, I and I I think this. I think this is gonna blow up. Um, you'll notice, like a lot of the big guys are have been there for a long time, mm -hmm. and they kind of they were ahead, just got ahead of everybody. And I don't know that they 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 succeeded because of that. Um, but obviously, consistency is also the other key. Um, I think I think your quality will improve over time. Mm -hmm. But if you're not consistent, um, then what are you like? You can't you can't really train your audience per se. If they don't know when to expect videos from you, and then right, you know, yeah, um, consistency but, definitely helps with retention too, right? I yeah, mean, but like, um, yeah, keep going. No, no, um, I, I I think quality should get better over time. If, if it's if it's not if it's not good in the beginning, um, just because people inherently improve, um, or they should want to improve, I should say. Um, but yeah, I, I would say consistency, and also just trying to be an early adopter, try to get ahead of the curve. Um, so, like, part of the swarm is in beta right now. If people want to be a, a, a new successful StarCraft II content creator, pr try to produce new and engaging content around that. Because it's, it's, it's not out yet, and it's coming out, and people want to see gameplay from it. It's evolving. It's, they're always updating it. Um, I think people need to take advantage of that if they want to be a really successful StarCraft II content creator. Uh, so how, mu how much of the folks that are successful... Um, how much of it has to do with just being like an expert in SEO and and the whole suggested video, you know, kind of game, right? That I mean, not game, but just system that that YouTube has. Uh, yeah. So there are certainly this people is here. A touch <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, I may not even be the best person to even address that. Um, just, but just to preface that any answer that he gives you is going to be completely white hat. <laughs> There is There's no. There, there are certainly people who have who have figured out that system and taken advantage of it. Um, I'm not going to name any names or anything like that. <laughs> but um, right. there, uh, yeah, SEO is certainly important to doing well. To to answer that question, I can't really go too deep in it though. Is it a necessity? Is it a necessity? Uh, I'd be lying if I said you didn't need to know. It, you, you, 
if you get like lucky, um, I, you definitely need to know mm -hmm. something about it. But I mean, the Shinema does a really good job of produce of like. Well, I can't say like. I mean, Versus is still a young channel, but I mean, Respawn, for example. Like, you know, I get, like, monthly director's email from Anthony, and it's, like, 15 pages long. Like, literally, it takes, oh, like, a half an hour to read his email. Yeah. And he's like, you know, you're with us on this community, and you're in this channel, and you are getting this email because you're a special person, and this is for your eyes only, and if you don't make time to read this email, then let us know so we can drop you. Now, here we go. And he tells us everything. Like, he tells us everything. And he says, this is what you need to be doing, and this is the titles that are coming out, and this is the... The, the pre-roll and post-roll wow. edits you need to be using, and this is the way you need to tag your videos, and this is how you need to sort, sort your metadata, and here's the director's guide updated PDF with all the stuff that you need to know, and here's how we're doing transcoding, and blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, like, that's all about building a producer community, and Zach's just at the very onset of that. He's just, like, starting off, right? And as weird as it sounds, it is Machinima, the big bad wolf of the, of, of the, of the, of the forest, you know, like, it's the, it's the 900-pound gorilla in the space. But Zach still has to start. Just like anybody out there who wants to start doing this, Zach's channel started with zero subs. Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like <laughs> IPL and IGN, you know, that type of thing. I mean, Machinima versus is a, a, you know, a kind of a branch off right now of Machinima. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. it's, oh. it's 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 a mini startup too. Right? Exactly, it's a startup uh, within a startup. It's like inception. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And right. then there's bacon bits and bacon bits and bacon bits. I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a lot of the folks that, that we talk about that have ma made it, you know, made a living out of making YouTube videos, they, they have their own channels for the most part. Um, are there any examples that you can, I don't know, like you can mention that are basically folks that are only with Machinima or only with a YouTube channel that are, are making a living, a healthy living? You mean just people who are making a living off of YouTube? Well, or off a YouTube channel, but like Machinima or Machinima Versus that don't have their own own oh, channel. Oh, just oh, like um, writing. You know, they basically picked Machinima. They, they picked y'all's horse. And you're, you're saying you're, you're saying that you're saying are people making a living off of stuff they submit to a director channel like mm -hmm. a Realm or Respawn or Sports? Yep. Um, to be honest, not to my knowledge. Um, but I, I mean, I'd have to like ask Anthony or Joel on the realm side of things. Mm. Um, I want to. I I don't think so. Um, but like I said, don't quote me on that because I'm not sure. Okay. So the YouTube channels are. I mean. The, also, I I don't know what you. What some people consider a standard of living yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. I guess reach. It just is there any equivalent person that's reached the success of. Of an know, actual to, consistent YouTuber. Yeah. No, no, I don't okay. think so. Okay, so it's so... Oh, no, no, what now? No, there's nobody who's reached the level of what? You're, by just submitting content to a director channel rather than the, their own channel. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it doesn't work like that, though. I mean, the way that yeah, it works yeah, is yeah, yeah. you have your own channel, you're growing your own base, and then you also have, you also have like, your submittals to like, community channels or producer community channels like, like Versus. And the reason that you you know submit to those those channels is so you can get exposed to a more diverse and wide array of subscribers. And then yep. those subscribe like for example, let's say I got a guy with a thousand subs, and he he he's got really high quality like casual FPS content, and I send his first video through Quantic Media's directorship to ver to respawn. Right? Yep. He's literally gonna get like another thousand subs within the next twenty four hours if his video is quality. So like right then and there, it took him a year to get the first thousand. It took him twenty four <laughs> hours to get the next yep. thousand. <laughs> yep. Right. It's, it, it's almost like a snowball effect. Oh, it's it's absolutely a snowball yeah. effect. I mean, this whole this whole thing with content is 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 totally. You know, there's definitely a, a a critical mass that you reach, and then and then it just comes, you know, <laughs> just comes fall. I mean, it just you just get subscribers like every day and that kind of thing. Yep. But um. Yeah, so I, I guess, you know, just, just to sum it up for the viewers, then, uh, you know, I guess being that these YouTube channels are really um, just, a, just a jumping point, right, from a promotion standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, try, you know, trying to get as many other eyes on it and potentially end up, you know, bleeding back to your channel. Um, it's, it's that type of, I think, it's that type of tool for folks, right, content producers. Yeah, you know, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Should use it as a marketing standpoint in it. Yeah. Uh, if you look in any any video on versus respawn realm, yep. you look in the metadata and you'll see director's channel or w ways to follow them or ways to get in contact with them, whatever it is. 
So we certainly promote them as well, along with obviously the content on the channel. Right, right. Okay. Uh, why don't we? You mind taking a couple questions from the viewers and then? Yeah, yeah, we certainly. Can all right, you guys that got questions out there, um, go ahead and add me on Skype. My Skype ID is ChainmanV. I'll pull you into the call, and then you can ask you know, me, Mark, or Zach any questions you want. And I think folks are wondering where John is. I don't, Maybe I just didn't explain it. John, <laughs> John is still with the show, guys. Jeez. John, John's on a plane to Lone Star Clash 2 right now. That's why he couldn't make the, the show. But, so I you know, adjusted the overlay accordingly. Some people are like, where's John? Okay, so any questions, guys? From let's we'll see if is Kurt around. Let me see if Kurt's around. Kurt always seems to have a question, but is this a uh, key hunt? Yeah. Okay. He he's like our a regular. <laughs> All right, let me let's see if Kurt's around. I'm at the. I just pull him on. See if he's. I always catch him when he's not ready. Now, what I want to know is why do you guys suck so much? That's what he's gonna say. <laughs> Moment of silence for check six, guys. A moment of silence for check six. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. That was a classic moment. <laughs> that was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> I, I'm not sure you know what we're talking about. Zach. It was uh, Suppy, right? No. What, uh, do we want to give me a little uh, backstory on this one? I think Suppy over the weekend did an interview. <laughs> And then he was talking about check six, and then at one point in the interview, he just says a moment of silence for for uh, check six. So he said this. <laughs> yeah. Is this is this video online? I assume. Yeah, it's gotta uh, be. Is oh god, where is I forget who interviewed him. Uh, do you remember, Mark? I, it wasn't it was you Gwen. guys. It was Gwen. It was Gwen. Okay. Yeah. It was Gwen in okay. yep. on, on one of your interviews. Yep. It was on one oh, of our god. interviews. Oh Okay, I didn't I, I didn't realize. I that. wanna I wanna uh you know yeah. Well, <laughs> guys, if you do if you don't want to call in your questions, go ahead and try, type it into. Uh, Type it in the screen, stream chat here. Um, I guess I'll, I'll ask one to you, Zach. Um, what's something in the esports industry that you like? If you were, you know, if you could pick anything right now that's reasonable, you know, not something that's just unrealistic. Um, what would you like to see, you know, done in the esports industry that might help you guys out? Um, that's a great question. I think I think a lot of the players, and I totally get it. I totally get it. Uh, focus entirely on live streaming and not enough on producing content, mm -hmm. um, or even just like putting any sort of care into produced content. Um, I would say if players could even just like some players release like you know replay packs, right? Yeah. I'd say like more players should be doing this, so it, it helps content creators out there. Oh yeah. Yeah, to build content or make content. Um, you know who releases these re replay packs? Uh, White Raw, Run. Yeah. Who else does uh, replay packs? Liquid Thorzane does. Thorzane, Liquid. Liquid. Liquid doesn't. Yeah, Noni does sometimes. Yeah, Liquid does a lot, but like, I mean, even just that, like, players should be releasing more of the content. And I get, you know, they like don't want to show off strats stuff like that, but you know, pick and replays choose. Are pretty, replays are pretty uh, coveted stuff, though. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think I think there could be some some leeway there. No. Yeah, absolutely. I think so too. Yeah, absolutely. no, I really do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think you're right. Okay, yeah, repot packs. Is a, that's a really good idea, and it's very easy. <laughs> you know, it, it's I mean, not hard. It's it not doesn't hard take at much at all. I mean, to yeah. zip, zip up <laughs> like ten files and yeah. post it on your, I don't know, wherever your fan club site, your, your thread, or wherever, right? Yep. Um, okay, yeah, that's a great suggestion. What shampoo do you use, Zach? Okay, that's. <laughs> uh, let's see. Actually, what game are you playing right now, for the most part? Uh, well, yeah. Halo 4? Really? All right, all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> prior, prior, to, prior to Halo 4's launch, I have just been addicted to League of Legends like no other. Um, okay. I used to play StarCraft a bit. I was horrible. I'm a silver player, silver league. I'm, I'm trash, to be honest with you. Um, but my, my latest addiction, or current, I should say, is League of Legends. Uh, I play a lot of support characters. Uh, like top lane, like Malphite or something. I've uh, been yeah, jungling now with some Hecarim. Oh, uh, and yeah, I did I did get Halo 4, so that's my current fix, I should say. I will get Black Ops 2, um, but I'm sure I will uh, end up back at League of Legends at some point. Uh, I did try Dota for all the people probably freaking out. <laughs> um, Dota is certainly a, a whole different beast in and of itself. Uh, that game is just not forgiving. I do enjoy it, though. Um, it's very difficult, but uh, yeah, to answer that question very 
simply Halo 4 and League of Legends. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, I, Halo 4 is like sitting like right here wrapped up. Yeah. <laughs> Still wrapped. I mean, yeah. kind of just up in the end. Get on that uh, for sure. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see, Mikhail has a question for you, Mark, um, in, in terms of the Quantic interviews. Um, why did you only choose, let's see, smaller community members this time around? Um, I think because our focus was on the quality of the production. And to be honest with you, to be running around the arena trying to get the attention and time of some of the higher profile players, it, it really it can detract from our, our showing our top quality production value that we really wanted to show off this time. So while last time we got a few more higher you know, profile folks, um, you know, I also think to a certain degree as well, I mean, let me just come out with this. I mean, you know, if you are a team or you're, you know, you're doing, you see what we're doing, are you going to really be supportive of that? I mean, no, you're not because you should be doing it, right, instead of us. And, you know, you should be taking this risk and spending this money, but you're not. So you're going to give us your top player to interview on our stuff with our Quantic Gaming you know, banner, repeating banner? No, probably not. But next year, hopefully, it'll be Razor, or it'll be Machinima, or it'll be whatever. And we'll be the anchor point for one of those partners. And will you come and send your player to be interviewed by Machinima? More likely, right? The fact that it's Quantic people doing the production and stuff won't matter. But in the end, see, the end game for us isn't necessarily to like get some huge brand benefit out of this or whatever. The end game for us is to increase the level of which things are happening at the scene and to actually see that per perpetrate, you know? Like, so that we can see this quality of interviews being done at every event and it is being funded by the people who can benefit most from it. And it's being done by the people who know how to do it consistent consistently and reliably. And that's what matters most, I think, you know? All right, McCall actually has a follow-up, but he wants to call in here, so I'm pulling him on the call, so he can ask the follow-up. Hello. Hey, McCall, how's it going? Uh, fine, fine. Just watching your show. Awesome. <laughs> and wanted to ask something. Uh, want Mark to ask Mark something uh, as a follow-up. You said that the last time we talked about not being able to have a big name uh, host so that you can draw views to your players and not being able to uh, put on a good show with a lot of uh, viewers. So I saw you did these 39 interviews and thought to myself, why didn't you get some big names um, and make a host yourself? I mean, actually, uh, I, I think that guy's name was Zach, the interviewer. Can't remember for sure. Gwen? No, no, not, not Gwen? Zach. Uh, Talking about Gwen or? Yeah, Gwen. Gwen. Sorry, sorry, Gwen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and w wouldn't be a good idea for you to make him a host-like uh, person or a content provider, and make him a host instead of bringing one up? I don't really. I don't follow. Totally. Your question. Okay, so if you if you would bring uh, the big name players, you would get views, and this uh, Gwen person interviewer would also become eventually a star in the StarCraft community. So you can right. make a show with him. Right. So I think that what you're saying is basically that. I mean, it's very true. Um, the next, the next event we do this with that is IPL5. So our plan for IPL5 is now we've got the production part down, right? Like, we tried to do it all in Raleigh. And yeah, the production was nice. The, it worked, but it wasn't quite where we wanted to be. So we're running into different, like, barriers now. So, like, in Dallas, we ran into, we didn't have enough top, top you know, candidates for interviewing and stuff like that because we were focused on the production. And in IPL5, we're going to be focused on trying to take some of this interview content off the floor, trying to be a little bit more mobile, trying to get, like, for example, let me give you an ex there's a, there was an outtake thing where you did an interview with us this weekend, you actually would be given a little tablet PC at the end, and you would fill in all of your social and uh, your social media information. Uh, there was a consent form, you know, that you would sign or whatever that says that we could use your, your image and likeness and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to try to front end this now, and the next time we're going to try to get a little bit more sophisticated with the scheduling. So we might have somebody down on the floor who's got a tablet who's actually working with a schedule 
and meeting with people and saying, okay, can we count on you being there, you know, 1764, sweet 1764 uh, at this time, you know. Um, and then Gwen would just be up there basically having one person after another, after another, after another. And he would have the downtime in between to prepare for his next interview. Um, whereas right now, like you saw some of the interviews, he, some of those interviews he basically um, was like unsure about some details or about some history about the, 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 the person he was interviewing. This was because he didn't have the time to do those reviews in between each. A lot of that's because he himself had to go down to the floor and actually grab a whole bunch of, uh, uh, of people for interviews. And then he would bring them back up to the room and he'd have them all standing there waiting. So you have to go one, 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 bang, 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 one after another. Yeah. So he yeah. wasn't had time to prepare. So we really want to smooth this whole workflow process out a little bit by the time we get to IPL5 and truly show the partners and the fans what we can do and and then you know look towards next year to try to get some partner funding and involvement behind the you know this. I mean what we're really trying to do here is we're saying hey strolling around the floor with you know a rinky dink 1K HD camcorder and like a micro LED lighting panel and a fluffy microphone isn't enough anymore. You know, step it up. Let's let's get real. Let's get let's do some real production here. Yeah, and but if, if you, you look at if you look at Hotbed and Can I Get, they mm -hmm. made they make these kind of interviews, the mm -hmm. corgi fine kind, mm -hmm. and I think they work. They do I work. Mean, that's, they do, yeah, the and it works even better. It works even better when you have a few million hits coming through your website every day. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you, you do bring up a good question, Mikhail, which is how much does the quality really matter at this point versus... Well, I was, was that the question, really? I mean, it, it's kind of. It's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's been well, not the real. big okay, names, I mean, the quality, and who the sh interviewer is. Uh, yeah, and, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's which personality is driving that show. I mean, the uh, quality matters. The mm -hmm. quality matters. The personality matters. But yeah. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Let's suppose it's Razor. Let's suppose we do Razor. Oh, wow. Show match between Root, Vibe, and Quantic Hawk. Let's suppose we do... Um, I just popped up on my desktop. Let's suppose we do Razor next year, right? And this whole setup becomes Razor Academy. Now, CSN and Rachel is the interviewer, let's just say. Suppose, right? And all the Team Razor teams are all scheduling their players to be interviewed. And the repeating banner says Razor Academy, and, and, and. Now, all of a sudden, Razor has a major presence at an MLG event that may or may not be sponsored by Razor. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah, that'll be great. So, I mean, like, I think that you're right. All these factors are important, but mm -hmm. the one that we're focusing on right now is the process and the capability. We're trying to show a turnkey capability. Now, yeah. look, we can go to any event and we can do this. We have, and we're not talking about, it's just like, oh, by the way, the production's really good because, you know, we're using, like, MacBook, you know. No, we're not using MacBook. We're using an array of iMacs to render this video. We have a time to post of an hour and a half. We have dual internet connections. Like, it's a lot of back-end logistical equipment. Like, if you look at the, you look at the equipment station, there's, like, like, 25 flash cams. And like 150 batteries, all charged into like little individual lithium chargers and stuff. It's <laughs> a lot of yeah. stuff that goes into this. Yeah, I saw the production. As I said, was nice, but is it? it is that enough? Is that what the people want? No, it's want? not. No, it's not enough. You're you're right. That's it's not enough. I, that's why I said that. We well, need, I mean, we Mark, need Mark kind of better. Mark kind of explained why he had a hard time. I mean, it was. Yeah, you know, I understood that. Yeah. Yeah. Just so. It's, I, I think player availability too is another issue. Yeah, that, like that was the big deal. Players want to practice or they're watching a game to see how someone's playing or they just lost and they don't want to do anything or they have to get food. There's, there's, they're always, it's not as easy just to grab somebody and like, hey, you want yeah. to do an interview? And you have to, you know, you have to walk there. You have to walk to the street. It's, walk. it's, it's yeah. not that far, but I mean, it's something that needs to be scheduled and planned properly yeah. and it's a lot easier if it's done that way. You have to also realize, too, like, Gwen is much better at getting these interviews than I am, right? I mean... Yeah, he knows a lot of people, too. So. Not to mention the fact that it's arguable whether or not I should be, you know, spending my, my capital on, on some of these players and folks by walking up to them asking them for interviews. I mean, if it's Rachel or Gwen or somebody else like that, I mean, Gwen's not a no-name personality, either. I mean, he's been around. Um, well, not to mention, he just knows a lot of the players. He knows a lot of these people, man. Yeah, I mean, so you know what? The thing that you might not know about Gwen is he's a car card-carrying member of the Screen Actors Guild. 
He's done movies like 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 cartoon movies and stuff like that. He's a voice actor. He has a Hollywood studio built into his house. Like he knows what he's doing. He's been around for a while. If you saw the if you saw the interview between him and Tempo, he was talking to Tempo about all of his sound equipment and his microphone editions yeah. and his like, you know, his like digital signal processing gear and stuff. Like I was like, Wow. Yeah, I get all, I get all of my sound advice from from Gwen and from Gwen. His yeah. his electric bill is ridiculous. <laughs> oh no, he has solar panels to like yeah, he actually has solar panels to, to pay for. Yeah, it's crazy. His yeah. like right. his just like servers full of Avermedia cards and stuff. It's ridiculous yeah. what he yeah. does. So I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty cool stuff. But I mean, I completely hear your point. I think it's very valid, and um, and we are gonna we're gonna keep trying. We're gonna keep building. We're gonna keep doing more, and uh, and hopefully we'll get some. Uh, We'll get some partners behind this. That's really the goal. I mean, you know, I mean, there's. I don't think we would keep doing this forever just the way that we're doing it without any support. Right. Yeah. One last thing. Um, right, last if one. you see Kenneget or uh, Hotbit, they do interviews not with only with Team Liquid uh, players, but with every player. So I don't think that's a problem that you don't highlight your players or your brand because you get value from just interviewing big names. And the second thing is you should really try to uh, put in some fun or quirky um, questions that, you know, rile up the players. <laughs> like I, don't know if you saw questions. The, I don't know if you saw the interview with Leia, but I mean, yeah. I Gwen didn't see every interview, but I saw a few. You should watch the Leia one. Because if Leia wins MLG next time, she's going to do a Colossus drop out of a warp prism in the venue from Sundance's yacht. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I mean, suffice to say, I mean, I guess, yeah, you're right. We are trying to do that. We're trying to do. There is a very thin line between quirky and fun and awkward and cheesy. And, yeah, 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 cheesy. Definitely. So, um, and Gwen, uh, you know, has always had this. His interview style is always one of those interview styles that definitely rides that line. So it's, it's. I think it's difficult for him to, especially when he does twenty or thirty of these a day. It's you know, you get tired, right? Um, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean. Hotbit and Kinnegut have gone through that too. I mean, that Hotbit, awkwardness too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Kinnegut's not the, the most articulate well, interviewer Hotbit either. Does, Hotbit does a great way of like just fielding it and like just rolling with it. Yeah, I mean, he just uh, owns it. Like, so I'm going to say something completely stupid right now. Exactly. Okay. We'll okay. get away with it. Though. We'll get away <laughs> with it. That's because he has a history of it now. <laughs> yeah, so it's exactly. like, it's a, it's a like, stick. I, did I think you, see you watch the, a. You watch a Hotbit interview because he just trolls everybody. I think that's... <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> did you see the Laughing Man's Caster Challenge yesterday? It was on Reddit. No, no, I didn't. Yeah, so like, yeah. they, like you know, the same guy did the evil, evil yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. He mm -hmm. did the uh, total biscuit one. He did one with Laughing Man, Quantic Laughing Man. And in the middle of the video, he goes, "Okay, challenge. Wh what what was Salad Fingers doing there?" And Laughing Man's like, "What Salad Fingers?" He goes, "Look it up later." Okay, next challenge. <laughs> Do this in the style of Fifty Shades of Grey. And I was like, "Oh my god!" Oh my god! <laughs> wow! Oh my god! Jeez! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mikhail. Thanks for the question, bud. <clears throat> Okay, see you guys. See you. Later, man. All right, how about just one more? Because I know you got to get going. Actually, how are we doing with time, Zach? Uh, probably like five minutes. Okay, okay. So one last there. one. This is uh, somebody who's asking. Uh, let's see. It's a long question. So <laughs> I'm trying to. I'll so it is, is uh, I guess, is the current, I guess, StarCraft II oh. and I guess League of Legends, is, is it currently oversaturated right now? And. Let's see. <clears throat> what do you think? You know, I think you mentioned a little bit about tutorials, but do you think there are any other kinds of content that are are missing right now from esports? Um, in general, I think there's not enough content that actually show players' personality, show players yeah. where they came yeah. from, yeah. who they are, how they came up, etc. There's there's just there's barely any of that any of that content. Um, the problem with that is it's just the access these players. And well, the problem is, is like, like JP does real talk, right? And yeah. I mean, yeah. do you want other people to do real talk? I mean, do you want real talk done three times, basically? No, of I mean, course not. Of course not. I, yeah. JP kind of, I think, owns that market too, and he does these two-hour-long interviews, and everybody watches them. <laughs> but I don't think you can, you can you can do it with other people. Uh, that's I think that's more of just a, strictly a JP thing, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I'm well, talking about like, like produce content like five minutes, like really, really well done. Um, you sit down one on one with the guy in the same room, like three cameras, switching shots, like any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. That that might that might not be uh, feasible for some people or whatnot, but uh, someday. <clears throat> so, so certainly, just more content that 
shine the spotlight on players, I guess. Um, other than that, the yeah, teams could absolutely do that. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll totally. give you an example. Um, like today, I I read the Muslims blog. I'm not sure if you guys read that. Like on on Reddit. I saw the post. I didn't read it yet. Yeah, I mean, it's great blog, but. He could have done video with it, and then it could have been, you know, great too. You know, yeah. You know, so. yeah. I mean, another issue is like, uh, actually, I don't, know, I don't know if any teams do this, but do teams spend money on media training? Is that viable? Is it, is it worth it? Oh, absolutely, it's viable. I don't yeah, know. Mark, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think it's viable, especially when you have players like we do, who do so, who do this, some of those things so well. Yeah. I mean, arguably, media training for us would be flying Maximus Black to the house for a week and a half. Yeah, not literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, the guy's not just good. He's, like, really, really good. Yeah. Really good. And there's just, they're probably really small techniques, too, you know. It, they it's are. Probably it's just like comfort. Subtle. It's a comfort level where it's just willing to, you know, look like a dumbass sometimes. Like, some people are just so, you know, even myself, you know, I'm just, sometimes I'm just, like, I don't want to look, like, completely foolish, so I'm just not going to be funny at all, ever. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That sort of thing. It's getting past that tip in this, really. And yeah, it really is. Getting past the notion that this will end up on the internet and I may look like a <laughs> dumbass, but you know, m maybe people will like me more for it. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. All right, bud. So let's let's wrap this up because I know you're you're kind of short on time. But um, do you post got any post MLG Dallas busyness and all that fun stuff? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm sure you got all that content to to release. Like how yeah, how. I mean, have you released any of it yet, or no? Uh, we'll have, uh, I believe, three interviews going up today. Oh, okay. Uh, one Halo related, and two League of Legends. We'll have some more StarCraft and stuff tomorrow. Okay, awesome. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, do you have any shout-outs or thank yous you want to do? Uh, thanks to you for thanks to both of you, I guess, for putting up with my nonsense and having me on the show. <laughs> oh, please, whatever. Uh, um, shout out to Fwiz, I guess, who's my boss. He's on a phone call right now. Uh, that's probably about it, though. Let me add a few words. Awesome, Mark. I mean, I want to shout out to Fwiz, too, just because he's a badass. <laughs> he is. That and, we used to, that and we used to hate each other. So, like, now it's like the true super uber, uber love fest type thing, you know? Uh, that's, like, that's like the story of esports relationships, man. Like, there are ups and downs. Like, <laughs> but no, definitely to our sponsors, of course, most notably <laughs> of which Machinima Versus, um, DB Vision, Twitch TV, Razor. Uh, and Alienware for being the exclusive provider of gaming gear for our, our San Diego County training facility. Uh, our partners in Korea, Startail, and all of our fans and friends. And uh, we wouldn't be where we are without you. We love you all. Thank you. Man, big, big uh, last two weeks for Startails, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Breaking that curse, whatever us. curse they were talking about. I mean, whatever. Startail's been killing it for sure. Or, or, or life has been <laughs> killing it for sure. Well, you know, it's like he's so young. Because, yeah. like, I think that the Startail coach, like, remember he did the whole, like, Xenix acquisition? Yeah, yeah. All like, really? That's, like, a lot of players, you know? Well, I guess it came with Dude, life, that so. That was, so, uh, right, yeah. I think it's right? paid for itself and uh, a lot more, so. Wow, yeah. I mean, there's some other really good Xenix players. I mean, don't, 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 yeah, don't really, you know, say anything to the contrary, because there really is. I mean, no, that's, it was the best thing to ever happen to Xenix, actually. Yep. So. Yeah, but anyway, Zach, yeah, big thanks to you for coming on, buddy. I mean, hopefully we, you know, a lot of content producers were watching the show and, you know, learned a lot, and hopefully we'll be, uh, you, know, you know, be submitting stuff to you guys and being partners with you guys. I think it'll be, be great because we, we need more content. We need more different creative content. It's like a lot of the same stuff being rehashed right now. So. Yeah, like you said, it's like the same, same like, three buckets. Um, so, I mean, I, I challenge anyone to think outside the, the, of those buckets, really. Yeah, yeah. Just find something you're good at and mix it. Like you know, Mark brought up a good, good one. You know, Sam. Sam. You know, he he's had culinary training and he's using that to to mix it into esports somehow. You know, and it ends up being something pretty cool. So yeah. I would actually even like? say like even to a certain degree like the mixing of the the player personality and the the mm -hmm. gameplay is something that's really like we're struggling with. We're really focusing on that right now. It's a big initiative. Um, one of our one of our players who just got back from ESWC, Hawk, is doing a 12-hour stream right now. And he's like the best, unequivocally the best guy on our team who does commentary while he streams, like live in game commentary. Yep. Which is not easy to do. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where we're trying to get more players familiar and comfortable with that. A lot of players have a difficult time managing playing the game and managing the fans at the same time. So, you know, I, uh, I really, you know, I'm really putting a lot more energy and effort and, and staff time behind trying to get players either more comfortable managing their fans. Getting um, yeah, 
He blew me away while I was casting ESWC, somebody in the chat says. I can't believe he doesn't get 5,000 viewers on his stream. Yeah, exactly. He's like, if you watch his stream, his commentary is so amazing. You're like, oh, what? I mean, have you guys, you should guys just watch the, the Pro Corner episode. I mean, he's very articulate. He's got some crazy creative builds. And, I mean, yeah, check him out. Check his stream out, guys, because he's, he's a great player. Um, but, yeah, anyways, going to wrap things up. Uh, the only thing I'm going to, let's see, the only other thing to announce is that we're going to be doing a Climbing the Ladder at Lone Star Clash 2. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be flying into Austin on Friday. Yeah, Lone Star Clash 2. 2? Uh, two. We're gonna be doing a, a climbing ladder at Lone Star Clash two, two. 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 Also. Also. two. Also, also, as well, also. as well. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sounds sick. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, Mark. You gonna you gonna drive over there? Or are you gonna? I think so, it? man. I think I might okay. even bring my little girl. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So we're gonna be doing at the end. It's gonna be kind of like um, kind of like the last Lone Star Clash when when In Control did like a impromptu state of the game. It's gonna be something like that. But it's going to, you know, me, John, and Mark, we'll, we'll all be there. And, uh, yeah, it'll be great. We'll, we'll try to get, you know, as many people as we can and, and uh, have them just talk about the tournament and just do, a, like, a mini post-mortem of the tournament. So it should be, should be a really great time. But, uh, but yeah, anyways, that's going to be it. I think next week, guys, next Tuesday, we're going to have, like, you know, lots of climbing lunch. Next Tuesday, we're going to have Mole Trap on the show to talk about, you know, just his experience in Korea and, and casting and everything. But uh, dang, my voice is going, so gonna have to call I don't it. Know, I don't know who Weisenhunt is, but he's one of the ESWC casters, and he was in our stream chat. So oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, great. I didn't get a chance to watch much. Yeah. Did you guys watch much of the ESWC? I didn't get a chance to watch much of it. I was in Dallas all weekend. I wish. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But Jimmy's but a big Sase, guy though. Sase won this yeah. Chinese tournament. There was like oh no god. coverage. Ten k on it. And we were like, oh my god, it's not even a photograph. It's crazy. Jeez. <laughs> it's all good. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. Later. Thank you.